Hello everybody, this is HG Shaves here. I'm back with another video. Hope this finds you well and that you are in good health and good spirits. Right, let's get into it today. So let's start with the brush we're gonna be talking about today and that is this beautiful Declaration Grooming Royal B13 Knot. I wanna thank the person who kindly offered to send this my way. Thank you very much, man, you're a rock star. Um, so some things to observe about this brush. Um, this is kind of the newer wave of the Jefferson uh, handle style to get really uh, nerdy and into it because that's what we do here. It's a shaving channel, right? Um, the lip here is kind of, it, it comes out a little bit more than it does on the previous models. And also it's just a little bit more, uh, I'm not an art guy, so my, my, my words aren't going to be um, correct here, but it's like a little bit more kind of rectangular at the top rather than kind of uh, circular, spherical, something like to that effect. And so to me, initially, I kind of didn't like the look of this newer style of Jefferson shape, but I actually found that it's a little bit more comfortable for some reason. Um, just because there, again, is a little more kind of curve here and um, it just makes it really comfortable to hold. Not that the other Jeffersons aren't, but um, anyway, I, I do like this new shape. It is the um, B13 batch, which is the current batch. And um, this pour is just beautiful. The, the, the camera uh, never does it justice, even with a better camera than this one. And uh, it's kind of um, similar to the Noveria pour, which uh, someone also sent me to borrow. If you look back, uh, maybe a month or two of videos, um, the pour is very similar, so that's interesting. Um, I'm going to put this in just a little uh, water. I don't like to really soak badger brushes like I would with a pour brush, but I like to give it a couple minutes um, in some warm water. The razor today, very exciting, also on loan, the Wolfman WR1.80 gap razor on a Maggard um, MR11 handle. Um, so the WR1 is the original, um, Wolfman, um, uh, razor design, or at least the first compared to WR2, right? And so it's got this very thin, um, head profile. It says, um, Wolfman WR1 on the bottom. And the blade gap, um, numbers for WR1 are a little bit misleading in that, this razor has a lot of blade exposure. And so that means that basically you're able to um, achieve a more kind of um, efficient shave at a lower gap number. So I believe the standard gap is something in the 0 0.6 millimeter range, like 0 0.67, is that maybe standard, or 0 0.63, something like that. And so this 0 0.80 is actually considered to be um, more on the aggressive end, and I definitely think it is. Um, let's go ahead and load the razor. This is the Gillette Wilkinson sword. Oh, I got it upside down. Let's flip it. Um, made in made in India. For a while there, these were um, a great um, value blade. I assume they probably still are, but I remember a couple of years ago you could order 100 of these shipped from India for like $7. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind. Okay, we've got the blade loaded in. There's just a little touch of overhang in there. Um, we're going to put the washer on and um, now let's put the handle on. Here we go. So yeah, it's been such a treat to continue to use some beautiful uh, Wolfman razors. And fortunately for me, the um, pattern does not stop. There's gonna be more in the future. So um, look forward to that. Blades loaded up. All good to go. We'll talk about that more as we go. And now let's talk about the soap. Uh, Soft Heart Series, Bear Stern Man, Sandalwood. Um, this is one of the most coveted uh, Soft Heart soaps that Will ever released. I had a sample of it that I reviewed on this channel a long time ago, and then I sort of told myself that I was never gonna be able to score a tub of this because it's just so hard to find, but thank you to the person who um, sold this to me. And um, yeah, um, this is what the Soap looks like it is pretty um, soft in terms of texture, but it's firmed up a little bit, I'd say, actually, since compared to when I originally tried this, the base. And let's just go ahead and get into loading. Jeez, just talking all day here. So I'm just letting the water out of these knots. And I think that's really, I mean, like, as I was saying, you don't have to soak badger knots. And 
it's not like it damages it or anything, but I think just the thing you worry about, especially with a knot like this, is that it holds up so much water that it's just gonna kill your lather, basically. Okay, so let's go into the soap here. Last time, I overloaded this a bit because I guess it's just so, it's a soft product, so I loaded a little bit more than I wanted to. So let's say, hmm, let's do 35 seconds. So that was 20. It's a little pasty, actually. So let's just put in a dab of water and then let's do another 15. Um, this is a beautiful sandalwood scent. However, um, as Will very uh, sternly told me, it is not just sandalwood in here. Uh, there is other stuff going on. And so I think that's kind of funny um, how there are several, um, I mean, for example, the, the one that people hear about most when they first get into the hobby is the Taylor Little Bond Street, the Tobbs um, sandalwood. And according to Taylor's themselves, that's actually a fougere scent. Um, <laughs> and then this one is not straight up sandalwood. Uh, it's got some other stuff going on. So that's just the way it is. And I, I don't know, that took me a while to sort of accept. I remember in the beginning, I was a little bit upset. I'm like, wait, why is like, why are they not totally clear about what's in this? And well, that's just how it goes. Okay, let's start the face lather. So this um, brush is very soft. It's got a little bit of a gel to it, but not like a ton. And it has less backbone than average for declaration knots, at least the ones I've tried, which is most of them, frankly. Um, and so, um, yeah, this definitely suits my kind of preferences. Um, I'm always happy to use a declaration brush that feels like this. Um, again, just because to me and in the knots, I've tried more often than not that the knots are just a little bit too um, stiff for my preferences. And I know a lot of people um, really enjoy that about these knots and that's just something that I see differently on and we can agree to disagree on that but there are lots of other great qualities about these brushes that I think we all like um, and so that's a nice thing. Um, the thing with working with this soap base is that it takes a ton of water and it looks kind of um, deceptive like you'll think it looks ready but then you realize you still need to add like another ton of water. Um, so I'm just gonna continue doing that and I'll keep you here for a second, why not? Um, I kind of forget if he's still doing these soft heart releases as steadily as he used to, feel free to chime in. But to me, the whole soft heart space thing very much feels like a 2020 thing, like, uh, like, at least me, I was stuck at home, pandemic, and uh, oh, let's go see what Will's doing for Soft Hearts this month or week or whatever it was. And so, I would probably say that I overloaded this once again because maybe if I would have loaded less, I would have known that to add so much water, but then again, with a knot like this, you never know if it's just gonna soak it all up. Okay, I'm going to keep working this in and bring it back in when I'm about to start the first pass with the Wolfman. Alright, we're back and I'm very pleased with this uh, first pass lather result. It's got a really nice sheen to it and um, it's kind of a, got a low structure, kind of creaminess to it, which is great. Um, that's one of the reasons why I, I liked this soap so much when I first tried it, but we'll talk about the bases more uh, in a minute. Let's talk about this razor now. So what everybody has told me, and in my experience, you actually need to ride the bar, ride the guard with this, which is not something I normally do. I realize I usually try to ride the cap, 
probably because of how much I like those gem razors and you have to ride the cap with those. So instead of, it's funny, there's kind of two ways to find the angle when you're starting out. You can either start totally like this and then just tilt up until you find it, or you can start like this and then tilt down until you find it. So with this, what I do is I start like this and then just tilt up slightly. And there it is. You can feel the blade cutting, but it's very in control and it feels like a manageable aggressive razor to me. There are some that are certainly more difficult to use than this. And in theory, due to the heft to this handle and, and you know other heavy handles you might throw on there, should be easy to maintain that um, so-called light touch. So it didn't take too much um, getting used to with this new um, shaving angle. And it's probably because it's not like a specific angle, like because there's so much exposure, it's easier to find a suitable cutting angle. Like for, so for example, I used the chiseled face titanium um, last week. First of all, that razor has a listed leg gap of like one point something millimeters, but this is actually a more aggressive razor. Due to the thin head and also the fact that you don't have to turn the handle up that much, I find it really easy to get those hairs right there, which I know is very important to some people. Shout out to you, Frank, if you're watching. Um, so as I was saying, the chisel face titanium is actually listed as ha having more of a blade gap, but this one has so much more exposure that this is definitely more aggressive than that one. That's really the only issue I've had this week. Just up in that area, which has been known to happen to me with several razors. Lather is falling off the razor, which it's usually a good thing. Okay, nice first pass. We'll rinse and come back in for pass number two in just a sec. Here we go for pass number two with the Royal and what a pretty brush. Here we go. Here we go, second pass across the grain mostly with the WR1. Um, to talk about the soap based stuff a little bit. So when I joined the hobby over two years ago now, the big Bear Strayman base talk was that he was transitioning all of the glissant soaps over to Excelsior. So At that point, some of the soaps had been released in Excelsior and some were still in Glissant. I remember, I think Lavanil was maybe one of those soaps that hadn't been transitioned over yet. Um, so anyway, that was the big talk. So Excelsior happened, then that was the standard for a while. Then he started doing these 
um, soft tart releases, which the ingredients of soft tarts and Excelsior are the same. They're just in different order. Um, I haven't gone in to see what the difference is, but anyway, there's some difference, um, uh, but it's the same sum of ingredients. There we go. Um, so he started doing these soft heart things and several people, um, myself included, you know, told Will, hey, we think this space is fantastic. Can you make everything in this space? And if I remember correctly, his reasoning to not do that was that Soft Hearts is a softer base and he didn't want somebody to like burn through a tub of soap, um, you know, quicker with Soft Hearts than they would with Excelsior because Excelsior is quite firm. So we kind of resigned to, oh, well, I guess this isn't, this isn't going to happen. And then people must have kept hounding him because then he found a way to release soft hearts in a firmer uh, configuration. Again, possibly just taking the same ingredients and tweaking them so that it was more like soft hearts than Excelsior. And so then that so base became the new standard, which I only tried uh, once or twice. So that became the new standard, but now he has this new base coming out called Omnibus, I believe. Um, the real diehard uh, Bear Star Man fans like Frank, feel free to chime in and tell me if I messed up my uh, timeline, timeline in there. Um, nice second pass, uh, rinse, and then uh, come back and talk to you over the third pass, final pass. Third and final pass. Here we go, third pass against the grain mostly. And this particular angle is very foreign to me. Um, riding the cap, or sorry, riding the guard going against the grain. Because again, usually I do the, or try to do the opposite. But feels pretty comfy. Comfy by aggressive razor standards. Of course. Um, so it's been nice to use this aggressive razor. It worked for me better than I thought it would. However, these days I always ask myself after borrowing a product, um, do I, do I feel the need to go buy one today, tomorrow? And the answer is no, it's a good razor and I could make it work in some sort of, you know, desert island situation, but well, there's no need to really, um, yeah. I had never tried WR and WR1 in any configuration. So this was definitely nice.
Again, writing the bar. As much as I can. This part here looks worse than it is. Feel around. Not surprisingly, Nice close shave. Gonna do my final rinse and bring it back in for post shaving in just a second. For post shave today, we're using a new product to me, which is the Pana Crema uh, Aftershave. So I found out that the brand Nuavia, that's actually only the soap and Pana Crema is the bigger brand name. This is an A, stands for aftershave and Rosso. I imagine that means red, I don't know. Um, so I use one, two, three. That's funny. Um, I like the texture of this. You have to work it in just a little bit, but it's not um, super viscous to where it's a pain to get it to rub in. And um, yeah, the scent on this is nice. Um, pairs with sandalwood decently well. There's like oud, amber. Um, definitely has that kind of resin sweetness. Um, and the actual performance of the bomb itself, I think is quite good. Um, these are pretty expensive, um, to find and just the brand in general is a quite expensive one, but I'm going to link their website down below anyway, just so you can go check it out. I had never seen their website before in my life. So that was kind of cool to see the Pana Crema A for aftershave Rosso. Okay, good. Let's do a final recap. Besides that, the Wolfman WR1.0. 8.0 solid bar. Aggressive razor, but not too bad for me. We use the Soft Heart Sandalwood uh, by Barry Man. Lovely scent. Probably my favorite sandalwood scent I've ever smelled. And then also the uh, Decoration Royal B13. Thank you all so much for watching. I know today was a long one, but what can I say? I got excited and had lots of things to talk about. So again, uh, we'll see you again in the next one. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Goodbye.